Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bar ahabita fillah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyib wa amilam al-taqabbilan and forgive us of our many, many sins and our many shortcomings. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen and cure us of our illnesses and increase our rizq and provide us with that which will be pleasing to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ourselves. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen uh, the question was asked Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah Ustad, may Allah preserve you uh, for your efforts There are two famous du'at by the name of Mansur as-Salami and Naif as-Suhaifi I'm assuming that these are the proper pronunciations that are giving da'wah and calling people to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but they have not clarified their minhaj and aqidah, making them doubtful. They reside in the areas of Saudi Arabia. Some late confirmed news has come that one of them, being the brother Knife, has been arrested by the Saudi regime due to rebelling in issues. What should be done in regards to these people and listening to people that are doubtful? Alhamdulillah, there's a brother that is known for Salafiya, has brought the speech of the scholars to the people. <clears throat> and knowledge is not sought from doubtful people and people that are majhul. However, the brother is being rebuked due to the people having a love for the du'at and are bel belittling the brother. May Allah preserve you. Uh, I do hope for a reply. Barakallah feet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you, I mean, and bless us all with uh, fiqh vidin. And with regards to this question, you said that there are two famous du'at and they call to the sunnah and first and foremost if they call to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then we assume that means that they are Salafi however as we all make mistakes perhaps they make some mistakes but then you mention with more explanation that one of them has been arrested for issues of rebellion and so this leads me to believe that this person perhaps could be from the Hizbiyin, some of the Harakiyin, those people who uh, encourage the youth to either rebel or speak out against the ruler openly and cause and sow discord, which is one of the ways of rebellion. As the scholars mentioned, that, uh, that rebellion is of two types, rebelling in, uh, you know, with the sword and rebelling with the pen or the tongue and so it's perhaps that these individuals could be of those people and Allah knows best because I don't know and I have not heard of them so I'm not familiar with them uh, what should be done in regards to these people and listening to people that are doubtful I think that's very clear uh, the questioner knows bet as much as the myself trying to answer and that of course that if someone is doubtful you should stay away and one thing I want to point out about, especially Saudi Arabia, because you have the major scholars of the Ummah here today in, in, in large numbers. You have Hayat Kibar Ulama in Riyadh, you know, and that's who we return a lot of our affairs to, especially those contemporary issues, those major mountains of knowledge, Imam Fozan, Imam Luhaydan. Sheikh Ali Ali Sheikh and, and people of the Lejna and other Mashayikh that are known, Sheikh Abdulaziz uh, uh, Rajihi uh, and others in Riyadh. Riyadh is, is, has, a, has a great uh, ni'mah. And then we have major scholars in Medina and in Mecca, of course, in Mecca, Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas, and you have many other uh, ulama, Sheikh Ajlan, and and others that are of the high, high caliber, and others that are also our great scholars like Sheikh uh, Muhammad Bazmul, half of the law ta'ala, and many other scholars, and Sheikh Muhammad Adam al Ethiopi, who's an alam in, in, in hadith. So it just depends on the specialty, but, and, and of course, I, did, I failed to mention Sheikh Rabi, but he's now in, uh, in, in Medina, I believe, and he probably goes between Mecca and Medina. And anyhow, we have many mountains of knowledge all around. So when you have great mountains in a place like Saudi Arabia, you don't really need to listen to uh, du'at and others that can 
sometimes can, can bring about confusion. And especially if they have some doubt or some cloud over them. Now, I don't know what you mean by clarifying Menhaj and Aqidah because in Saudi Arabia, even the Hizbis, even those who you might call Ikhwani, they have basically a Salafi Aqidah. It's just that maybe in some Masail of rebellion, rebellion and things related to the ruler, Bas, they might have some, uh, some uh, differences with Ahl Sunnah. So this is where they go astray. So in general, you would say their Aqidah is sound, except in this issue, he has some, you know, similarities with the Harakiyin or whatever the case may be. It depends on the level of deviance. Uh, but as far as the other aspects of, of Tawheed and other issues and the Qadr and Iman and the issues of Iman, there, this is what is propagated and what is learned in Saudi Arabia. So you don't really produce Sufi scholars in Saudi Arabia, although you may have some that are usually foreigners that would be... Uh, that may have lived here and they teach you know like in Medina you have a lot of, of Sufi scholars Sufi sheikhs and even in Jeddah and other places probably all around the kingdom that are there so that's another issue and re with regards to their minhaj okay then that would be an issue perhaps of minhaj as well so the point being as far as my advice which doesn't carry much weight uh, and as you mentioned there's a brother on the Sunnah who already has brought the statements of the ulama maybe about these individuals have, this is sufficient you don't need to really make research better but rather you should deal with the people with gentleness and you have to realize that Islam is so beautiful with hikmah if we just actually if we actually understood and practiced we would we would have so much more success in our dawah and so much more success in our practice and what I mean by this is look at how Islam prohibits us from cursing even false gods of the idolaters. Why? Because then the, I, the, I, the, the for example, if you curse the, for example, there's a sect in Buddhists, they, they have the Gahanzan, okay? And I know because I have family members who are from this sect. And if you curse that Gahanzan, then it's going to make it easy on their tongue for them to curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and curse his messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is why Islam from wisdom teaches you to guard your tongue and not even say that when you know what people love someone and are attached to someone you have to deal with that with wisdom you don't just say oh so and so is a hisbi and you have 20 people who follow this individual and love this individual uh, but rather you need to deal with those things with wisdom and clarify for the people the issues and that takes ilm and fiqh and that's very important and I know some people don't want to hear that and they reject that Totally, because they don't, I don't know why, that, I mean, subhanAllah, and I'm not trying to be bragging or anything, but I, this is what I learned from the ulama, I just, I, this is what I saw, and this is what I see from the books, is these, these kind of things, that these things are masail, these are, these are not just Mickey Mouse masail, where you just jump in and you make takfir of this one, and temdi of this one, and you're, and you have no fiqh fideen, you don't know how to deal with people, yes, so-and-so is a mukhalif. How are you going to deal with him, though? And, 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 and to know the fiqh of dealing with a mukhalif, maybe you have more knowledge than this individual, and this individual respects you. So you have a majal, you have a means. How many times have we taught in... I, I can give you one example myself that I used to teach in my, in my city where I was born, in Seattle, or outside of Seattle. And the imam or the, the one who established this musallah was completely a, a part of a jama'at that was a jama'at, uh, 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 a hizbi jama'at. I mean, really, like, you know, the understanding of Islam, you know, was out there. But he respected me. And he allowed me to teach Salafi. Salafis were coming to this place. And we were, we were going through with Surah Thalatha and things like this. And that comes from hikmah. And then from my lack of hikmah, because I was a lot younger, and I was speaking, and he over... And, and in fact... What he said to someone else who then related to me is that Khalid doesn't respect me, so I don't want him to teach here anymore. So instead, I should have given him more respect, not out of kissing up, trying to get a place to teach, but out of hikmah and calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in fact, maybe he would have learned more and we would have had the place to continue to do our, our lessons 
and there will be more greater benefit. This is the objective. The objective is to call people to Allah with uh, good preaching, righteous preaching, and wisdom. Basira. So this is the, the point is anyhow, you, whenever you deal with Ahla Bid'ah, or you deal with Ahla Sunnah, with anyone, that you, you need to do, you need to have wisdom. You need to have hikmah in how you deal with them. So don't, and I'll give you another story just to relate these things, and hopefully it doesn't bore you, but a sheikh, one of our mashaykh in Ha'il, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Obelan. May Allah preserve him. And this is a true story. And look at the hikmah of the mashaykh. So, because Sheikh Abdullah is known in Ha'il, in Ha'il and also Qasim in those places have a lot of hisbis. Those are the kind of places, you don't come up in there and start talking about Sefer and Salman and major hisbi figures. You better not. They will kill you. And especially in a place like Basim, they'll probably kill you for that. Those people are so loved there. And this shows you the danger of Hizbiya, but it also shows you that you need to have wisdom if you're calling to the truth. Is it a benefit that you call him a Hizbi and then you're killed? I don't think so. I don't think that did anything for you and your family. It didn't do anything for the Dawah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point is, anyway, the Sheikh from his Dawah, some of the Hizbis, they didn't like that. And they came to his farm. And they beat him with this stick, split his head open. And then they were arrested, these two guys. And the sheikh, he pardoned them and let them free. And that was a part of dawah. That was a part of wisdom. But it goes to show you that you need to have wisdom when you deal with, uh, with anyone. I'm not going to go to a deal bundy. In fact, sometimes I have to pray with people who are majority deal bundy in my locality. That's the only masjid around or else I'm not going to be able to pray. You know, the imam, he knows me, he respects me even, and I have my respect for him. And, uh, you know, as the imam, I respect, I don't go beyond his authority. He's the imam of that masjid and the imam of that community. They do jamaat to That is their community. But we can respectfully deal with each other because he's a Muslim at the end of the day, and I'm a Muslim at the end of the day, even though he probably regards me as a muqtadiya, and I regard him as a muqtadiya in that sense. But... There's a fiqh of how to deal with that. Is it going to be beneficial for me to get in his face or debate and argue or, or whatever the case may be or cause fitna in the masjid and be banned from the masjid, the place to pray? Or would it be better to be in there and even there's some Salafis in that masjid and others who sometimes they, they respect me and they we, we I've had some sittings with a couple of brothers which, you know, I, it surprised me. I didn't even know in that masjid that some of those brothers, they weren't all on the same thing. The point is, is that you have to deal with people with wisdom. And as the Prophet Sallallahu said, that there isn't a thing that, uh, that comes uh, with, with, you know, with gentleness, everything is achieved. You know, this is one of, this is the general meaning. That that shows you how important gentleness. It doesn't mean in all situations, but especially when Ahl Sunnah is weak. That you should have gentleness and wisdom in dealing with the people. So that's all I can say about that. And I say stick with those major scholars that are ma'roof bi sunnah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.